Around the world, money changes hands in exchange for food, clothing, even automobiles. People buy the things they need from people who need to sell them in order to make money to pay for needs of their own. Transactions involving money or barter are among the most basic principles of economics. And understanding how an economy works will help to understand how to study a culture. What is a culture? A culture is a learned behavior acquired by individuals as members of a social group. As discussed in episode one, there are several universal elements to help us define a culture. They include economic activities, geography and natural resources, social organizations, and beliefs and values. Part of what defines a culture are shared customs, beliefs, morals, traditional practices, and a common language. The sum of the elements that unite a group of people is called a culture. Culture may differ from one region to another, even from one school to another. But in each unique part of the world, a culture is a total way of life. This lesson will examine how the economy of a region helps to create or inform the culture of the people who live there. The study of economy begins with understanding that everyone has subsistent needs. Subsistent needs include a person's basic requirement of food, water, shelter, and clothing. Subsistent needs are necessary for survival. Some people produce goods on a small scale for personal consumption. Others create their goods or services on large scale for mass production. But regardless of the scale, a person's survival depends on meeting subsistent needs before trying to obtain personal wants. A tablet, computer, jewelry, or car are considered wants, not needs. Members of a culture meet their subsistent needs by producing or providing goods or services. There are three types of production in most cultures. Service, agriculture, and industry and manufacturing. Service includes things that are often physical or intellectual, such as cooking or selling food. But it also includes services such as dentistry, driving a taxi cab, or teaching a class full of students. Industrial production includes the manufacture of goods from various natural resources. For roughly a century, many countries have been involved in the production of cars and trucks. But industrial production, which is often automated, also includes products ranging from root beer to cookies to pancake syrup. Agricultural production includes the cultivation of crops and livestock for food and clothing. Many farmers grow corn, grains, and vegetables. Some produce meat and dairy products. In some countries, farmers use large, modern machinery. Their products are mass-produced and are often sold to wholesalers who bring the product to grocery stores. Many new urban farmers are growing food in neighborhoods or even in retired warehouses. In some cases, agricultural products are now mass-produced, such as in this chicken farm in Ethiopia. In many other countries, farming is still done by hand or with the help of horses or mules. 
Farmers then bring their harvest directly to the local market. The economic activities of a culture are determined by at least three factors. Topography, climate, and natural resources. Topography means the physical features of the land. Topography also helps determine the economic activities of a culture because the physical features influence how the land can be used by the people who live there. If an area is mountainous, people may make their living from tourism or recreation. Others may raise livestock that are adapted to mountainous terrain. People who live on flat terrain or a plateau with fertile soil often choose agriculture as a primary economic activity. People who live in areas surrounded by water often focus on economic activities such as fishing. The climate of an area also has an impact on the economy of a region. Climate is the average condition of the weather over a long period of time, with an emphasis on temperature and precipitation averages. Outdoor activities such as tourism, recreation, farming and fishing can be dramatically impacted by climate. People who live in warm, dry climates are often involved in different economic activities than people who live in cold, wet climates, such as Alaska, Canada, or Norway. It's important to note that climate is changing. For example, glaciers are receding in many parts of the world. And many forests have been clear-cut or are struggling with disease. Climate change is now impacting the economy of some parts of the world, including low-lying coastal areas such as Myanmar. Natural resources are elements from the earth that can be developed and used by humans in their economic production. Timber, water, oil, natural gas, and minerals are all natural resources. The natural resources of a region determine what materials are available for economic production. In a forested region, people may be employed in cutting timber, working in mills, or using wood products to make flooring or siding for houses. Because natural resources are unevenly distributed from nation to nation, people from different cultures usually interact with each other to meet their basic needs and wants. When goods are exported by one country and imported by another, it's called trade. To help provide for a society more efficiently, many cultures develop technology. Technology consists of tools, machines, plans, and procedures that aid in the production of goods and services. Some technologies have been around for hundreds of years. Some are based on ancient practices, but are continued for artistic or aesthetic reasons. And in some cases, technology is used instead of manual labor to speed up a manufacturing process and make it more cost effective. Computers have allowed for significant advances in technology, and most countries in the world now use computers for a variety of purposes. Computers and related devices such as cell phones and tablets have also had a dramatic impact on global communication.
Some cottage industry production is still performed without advanced technology. These candle makers in India are highly skilled and produce beautiful products that are exported around the world. In some cases, handmade products command a high price because of their uniqueness and artistry. No person can produce everything they need or want. For that reason, cultures develop economic systems to exchange goods and services. Barter is the simple trade of one item for another. For example, someone growing vegetables may trade with someone producing flowers or meat. In this system of barter, each person is using their available resources to obtain what they need or want. In most cultures, currency, including the use of cash or credit cards, has replaced barter. A monetary system facilitates the exchange of goods. When people are paid money for their work or their services, then they can spend the money they've earned to purchase goods that meet their subsistent needs or wants. A free market economy is one approach to organizing economic activity. A free market economy is consumer driven and is generally ruled by competition among sellers. Free market economies may be regulated by governments, but they are not typically controlled by one person or organization. In a free market economy, companies decide how much to produce on an annual basis. Companies create a budget to determine their manufacturing costs, including the price of raw materials, equipment, labor, management, and employee benefits such as health insurance or pensions. Once a company knows the costs of producing their goods or services, they can then determine how much money to charge for their products. For for-profit businesses in a free market economy, the price needs to be competitive, cover the costs of production, and make a profit. A command economy is another example of a way to organize an economic system. In a command economy, the government owns all significant enterprises and closely regulates all economic activities. In a command economy, the government typically controls the majority of wealth, dictates the rights of individual workers, and manages all elements of production. Though no two cultures or economies are exactly the same, it's more likely that wealth will be more broadly distributed in a free market economy. Still, the distribution of wealth is likely to be uneven throughout any culture. There are many economic factors to consider when studying a culture. To recap, it's important to observe how topography, climate, and natural resources influence the economic activities people perform. Members of a culture meet their needs through the production of goods and services. There are three types of production in most cultures. Service, agriculture, and industry and manufacturing. Understanding economic systems and how people meet their needs and wants will help greatly in learning how to study the various cultures of the world.